the Jason Whiskey Wise. Myself, Jason, bringing you Whiskey Advent Calendar, day number 20, where today we're going to be reviewing behind door number 20, which is the Kilhoman Sanag. Now, if you haven't seen this one, or why I'm not opening this one, the camera cut out five times. This is actually take six, I believe. Um, so, something wrong with the battery. However, that is the Kilhoman there, Sanag. Now, Kilhoman is an Isla distillery. So located where the, all the peaty, earthy, smoky whiskies are produced. Uh, more, I think, believed in the west side of Isla. And uh, the name Sanag, if I haven't said that right, is a bourbon and sherry matured whiskey bottled at 46%. And the name actually comes from a little rocky, woody creek. Woody? Rocky Creek. <laughs> I just threw wood in there. But yeah, it's a rocky creek and it's named after that. So if you are going to the distillery and this is one of your favorites, pick up a dram, sit next to the creek, the little pond, and enjoy the whiskey at hand. So we're gonna leave that there, with Mr. Bananas. He did pick out a comment from the Dalmore 12 video, which was actually from Food Quick. So if you guys haven't seen Food Quick, fantastic YouTuber as well, whiskey reviews, and he does a lot of live streams. Go and check him out. Uh, he was talking about, he went to pick up a Dalmore 12 and then got distracted by uh, other whiskies, which is very easy when you're doing whiskey shopping. Uh, but yeah, I will have the full Dalmore range on the channel within, I think, the next two weeks. So I've actually got quite a few whiskies over there on the shelf and I'll pull them off and then we'll do the reviews for them here on the channel. So anyway, let's get back to the Kilhoman because I'll drag off the point. So let's begin by assessing the nose of this whiskey. Into the nose. So to begin on the nose for the Kilhoman, quite floral on the nose. This is very soft. You are getting that distinctive earthy peaty character. It's not a soft floral peat, but this is a, a heavy peat. It's not a super peat though. It's got a little undertone note of a burning rubber. I'm getting lavender. It's like if you've taken sort of a clump of lavender and you just lit it on fire and you're getting that sort of sweet aroma from the lavender, but then you're getting that whiff of smoke that's all just like combined with the two. Sorry if that was really animated. <laughs> Even a little bit of like candle wax. If you've got like candles that are burning, that waxy aroma that comes off them, or hot wax. There is a lime and grassy sort of character which is really just emerging after giving it some time in the glass. A lot of grass. I was thinking lemongrass at first, but then maybe we can go with lemongrass. A bit of lime. And there's a sort of, sort of tropical fruit which is just sitting there in the background. More like a dry mango. Wow. Normally don't get that with uh, Scottish whiskies. They very rarely get a lot of tropical characters, but this one's giving it there on the end of the nose. So, move into the palette next. Solange. So, now into the palette for the Kilhoman. This one has got a really lovely texture on the palette. Almost waxy. I'd say a silky waxy, because it's not fully waxy, but it's just a little bit less in texture. Those fruity aspects are there. But what it really reminds me of is, you know when you're doing a barbecue and you've got those cold briquettes and you've just lit them on fire, they've been sort of burning away for most of the night and then by accident you drop one of your pieces of meat and it slides through and it goes onto the bricket and it gets that little char but a slight bit of coal on it and if you're daring enough to take a bite out of it like I've done on an occasion you get that sort of charcoal -y, ember, sort of toasted, smoky, I wouldn't even say toasted, no, this is like a charred piece of salted meat. And when I say salted, it's because you get that character of sea spray coming through, that salt, sea salt. The fruity aspect from the sherry cast is there, but it's not so heavy. Probably a little bit of figs, and these are toasted figs, so Take a nice juicy succulent fig, you cut it in half and you just stick it on a on a sort of barbecue. That's the sort of fruity aspect I'm getting. A little bit of even dark or those black dates. Because I've recently been trying to experiment lots of different types of dates. And the darker one gives you a little character of tannin notes. Really nice. And it sort of finishes out a little bit, but I'm gonna assess the finish separately again. So now into the finish. So now into the finish for the Kilhoman. The peat is still so consistent in this one, it is remaining, it is not dropping off, it is staying consistent. And at that too, it's not a soft peat, I'd say it's more towards a medium high peat. The finish is rather long, it's giving. 
The peaty aspect is there, the sweeter aspect is behind it. Like I mentioned before in the palette, that character of like a toasted fig, or a little bit of a, a barbecued fig, the sweetness. It's almost like taking a creme brulee and torching over the top of it and just overdoing it ever so slightly. And when you take a bite of it, you're gonna get the sweeter aspect, the caramelly sort of notes, but also that nice char, that little burnt crispy top bit, which is just almost like it's gonna snap in your mouth when you're having that little piece of it in your mouth. Really great. I'm liking this one a lot. Let me know your thoughts if you tried any of the Kill Homans. But on that note, I'm gonna leave the video at that. If you guys have enjoyed the video, but feel free to drop it a thumbs up. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, which I'll leave over there. And I'll leave some other related videos up on screen if you fancy going and checking them out. But on that note, that's been from me, Mr. Bananas. I'll catch you all for the next video. Salaja.